and we are back to the uh, That's the problem, it's live. So we just can't rewind, it can just start all over again. We are back here live in Hall 2, CB 2015 at the Intel booth and the Tech Lounge studio. And I'm really proud to have uh, Gang Lu over here. You're an editor for Tech Note in China and uh, Tech Run China. Yeah, uh, well, that's true. Well, actually, I'm the founder of Tech Note. I also manage Tech Run yeah, China. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So it's the first time for you over here in, in Seabit? Well, my first time in Germany, actually. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And now, we, I mean, China is, is, is the partner country of Seabit this year. Yeah, probably that's, probably that's the reason why, why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already had Jack Ma uh, to, to open up uh, the conference. We have the Xiaomi CEO uh, speaking at the global conference later. Yeah. And we have Gang Lu. <laughs> well, well, they are big guys. We are. <laughs> I, I am small guys so here. So. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 Tech Note started started when? I mean, you have a huge impact on the on the, on the Asian market with it. Well, I think. Well, well, it's a long story. Actually, uh, Tech Note. I started. It's my own blog. Yeah. Uh, I started back to two thousand early two thousand seven. Yeah. So it's a long time ago. But it's been my hobby from two thousand two thousand seven until like twenty eleven. So 2011, then I, I realized probably it's time to kind of uh, turn my hobby as kind of mid business. So I would say like techno as a business is uh, as a company is started from 2011. Yeah. So it's uh, now we just enter the four, fifth year. Yeah. So in general, it's it, is it all about? You're gonna have a speech over here uh, in in, in, yeah, in the hall, hall 11 about um, the Chinese startup scene. Yeah, like 3 p.m. today and scale 11. Yeah. So uh, this is also what you're covering on TechNode. Yeah, because TechNode is more, I think 95% is all about the Chinese startup ecosystems. Um, I think the, we're kind of unique in China because we are, actually we, are, we have three languages. We have Chinese, English, we even have French, but it didn't work well. Um, yeah, but basically the Chinese, we have Chinese version, we have different focus. Mm. The Chinese version, we, we write about Chinese startups, like two or three Chinese startups every day. Yeah. But on, but, but for English version, we more cover like Chinese tech news, venture capitals, in more in generals, yeah. Which, which became huge, especially in the last three or four years. Yeah, fortunately, we, we've been running for <laughs> years, four years. We still survive. So that makes perfect sense. I mean, we're looking back to two, uh, 2011, right? You turn it into a business, yeah. uh, which is, and I think in general this was a kind of crucial year to see this kind of. Um, also, when, when, when we were talking about those premium brands that are coming from China right now, yeah. especially when it comes to mobile, and of course, you know, we have, we have, we have the big names here with Xiaomi, but also the Oppos, the Gionis. Um, it feels like this new breed of Chinese startups kind of came, came up at around four or five years ago. Yeah, I think it's, uh, well, I, I think I was like a huge difference. I think the industry in China or startup ecosystem in China. Is I think it changed a lot, and also the growing is 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 big, been growing so fast. I mean, mm. like for example, as as you mentioned, like Xiaomi, probably that's the most important kind of uh, icon right now in China, yeah. uh, because it's getting so strong. It's probably the, well, it's already the number one, like as a phone phone manufacturer in yeah. China now, yeah. um, and also it's a very uh, ambitious, uh, aggressive in the global market. Uh, they go to India, go to Asia. Um, they come to EU, American market maybe is still difficult yeah. because the, the, the IP, the, yeah. the patent issues. Um, but we see Xiaomi and also many other companies, and especially the tech companies. Yeah. Um, I think maybe it's been in the past several years, we, everyone know like Huawei or ZTE because they are huge phone manufacturers. Right. But now we see more and more Chinese startups um, they coming, they get out of uh, China. Yeah. They spend more and more effort in China. They set up office in Yin Yu, in Silicon Valley. Uh, they want to make money. Right. They basically want to earn US dollars instead of just I and B. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a huge difference because I think the couple of reasons, I think mobile, the mobile from first day is like global market. So people come from China, they can, you know, they can pay by download. But, but it's quite tricky. Uh, what I think is it's quite interesting because in China, the pay by download business model doesn't work in China, yeah. and people don't want to pay for 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 downloading apps. Right. So I think for more and more Chinese startups, actually, they, it's hard for them to survive in China. 
So you say, okay, maybe if we have great product, maybe the, the global market is the where to go. And uh, also because I think the company like Xiaomi, are so, they're more and more like hardware companies. Yeah. Um, so you know, we have a city called Shenzhen. Yeah. It used to be like the, the heaven for hardware copies. And you know, whatever you have here, we have very mature manufacturer chain yeah. in Shenzhen. But used to be they are doing the copycats, lots of copycats. But now it's, it's interesting because like the, the smart hardware, smart devices, wearable devices is really taking off yeah. in the global market. Then for some reason, you know, Shenzhen become the heaven for the like, IoT yeah. as well. So, so I, th I think it's, um, it's, it's getting, getting more interesting. Yeah, I think it was like a, about a year ago uh, when I wrote an article uh, saying, you know, 2015 will be the year when the first uh, Western premium OEMs are going to copy features from the Chinese smartphone manufacturers because it really changed so quickly. And I, I, I just love this idea how, um, how it gave um, the, the, the Chinese manufacturers also a very own identity, um, that they're not seen anymore as those copycats. Um, just as a, an amazing example, I mean, a, a company like OnePlus didn't really exist. Of course, they were somehow a spin-off yeah. of Oppo. But um, in just 12 months from, from, from zero, on our German side, and it's, it's still a little bit of an obstacle to really buy them because of their invite system and everything, and the Western yeah. markets are not uh, used to this, right? Yeah, in yeah. Xiaomi, everybody, uh, in, in China, everybody knows about this because of Xiaomi. Yeah, I think Xiaomi and the OnePlus is a very typical example. Yeah. Xiaomi is so strong in China, yeah. and also now it's global. But OnePlus is very, it's also very interesting because the OnePlus is like... It's my oh, daily driver, oh, right? Oh, wow. I also have all the Xiaomi I, phones with I, me. I, even myself, <laughs> I mean, I'm so surprised that OnePlus did a great job in the global market. Yeah, but, yeah. but if you talk to the Chinese uh, customers, Chinese audience, probably they don't know OnePlus. <laughs> but outside China, they're getting so famous. And on our German side, on our German side, they are the number, the fifth most popular device in really? terms of the mobile traffic that we're getting. So they are ahead of each and every Sony device, each and every HTC device. Well, it's absolutely amazing. Wow. Absolutely, just, they have like a, a share of about 4%. Here, Germany? Yeah, well, on, just on our side, right? Oh, which is, okay. which is, which oh, is all about oh, right. oh, yeah. mobile aficionados, right? Wow. And, and, uh, but, I mean, those guys, all of them that got one, they are just basically constantly recommending it uh, to their friends, saying, I mean, look at this. I paid like $300 for it, and I'm getting this amazing device. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. on it since last I, August. I think that, that's the thing. I think the huge difference we see now is, because you to be, I think the people see the Chinese product. I mean, in the past many years, we always consider Chinese product as cheap, mm. but quality just okay. We don't really have like loyalty fans. Yeah. But now, one plus it's happening is, they do have fans. Well, I'm still surprised, but they do have plenty of fans outside yeah. China. I think that's the probably that's the most important change we see here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was also interesting. Uh, well, 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 Carl from uh, Carl Pei is a good friend of mine. He was working for Oppo before, and now he's working for uh, for OnePlus, and uh, he's been constantly <laughs> pitching it. And you know, as soon as I got my device, I said, you know what? Wow, that's amazing. Uh, what they did. And I also love that they were going for cyanogen mode. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work out so well right now, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's happening. That's, yeah, that's also disruption in the yeah, market. Yeah, also the, the founder of OnePlus, I don't, I don't think he can give a uh, good uh, English speech at all. But yeah. he's, he's uh, kind of a local guy, but he, he, he did a company with global attention. Right. Let me just see what I have here. I have... So how many Chinese phones you have? A lot. That's the <laughs> Mi Note. <laughs> That's a Mate 7. That's uh, um, Oh, that's a new HTC. Have you seen this one? That's the... M9. Just, oh. Yeah. Okay. It's a good phone. I heard that it's a good phone. Yeah. It, 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 it's a beauty. A heavy. It's a beauty. We're still, wait, we're still waiting for a software update before we're going to release our... Um, our um, review on it because so the software you're, you're is not, not, not final on this one. So are you a fan, are you a fan of Xiaomi? Um, I think the Mi Note is absolutely amazing. 
This is probably the most competitive tablet that is available on the market. Do you know that brand called Meiju? Oh yeah, I love them. I love the MX4 Pro. Yeah. Yeah. This is because of this huge battery. Right? This yeah. is absolutely fantastic. Uh, people say hardware-wise, it's better than Xiaomi. Yeah. I I, no, no, I agree with you. Um, I think also what Oppo and and, and Gioni are, are, are doing is just very sophisticated in terms of the design process, in terms of what kind of features they're squeezing in there. Um, yeah, I think that the, the dynamics in general are happening in in, in China right now uh, when it comes to hardware. You know, yeah. I'm also using this this Mi Band, <gasps> right? This is fifteen dollars and it has a battery life of three months, right? Yeah. And, and try to do this with a Fitbit for a hundred dollars. That do, that does exactly the same. It does exactly the same. Costs almost ten times more and has a battery life of uh, barely a week. Yeah. This is amazing, right? But th that's why there's so many companies that getting are afraid of uh, Xiaomi, because Xiaomi is just, they can do everything, but with cheap price, but good yeah. qualities. Yeah. Well, I mean, the distribution strategy, uh, that, that, that was new. That was very disruptive for a smartphone manufacturer. Yes. Really going, I mean, we are based in Taipei, and I remember when Hugo Barros and the Xiaomi CEO came over for a press conference, and there were like 500 teenagers waiting in front of it, screaming, said, this is this a Backstreet Boys concert here? What's going on? Right? Oh, no, the was, Chinese Steve the, Jobs. The, yeah, that was a press <laughs> conference. Yeah, uh, so interesting. So you're going to be on the stage in in Hall 11 um, in yeah. the afternoon. Yes, right, and talking about the, the, the Chinese ecosystem. Yeah, I think the the more like Chinese startup ecosystem, and also is like the latest China uh, tech trend. Yeah, fantastic. So there will be a recording of it. I'm pretty sure about this because they're recording basically uh, anything. And this is a Cbit, this is a Cbit startup hall. So it's going to be quite interesting. Okay. If you guys want to get to know more about um, Gang Lu, just head over to uh, TechNote, his website. You want to follow that one. And also, he's contributing to uh, TechCrunch China. Yes. Um, definitely the guy to follow um, for the latest news, not only with those, well, they're not startups <laughs> anymore, to be honest, even though they are only available, uh, only on the market for like four years right now. But these are already settled companies. Yeah. But they have this amazing startup economy in China, especially with Internet of Things, what's happening right now. It's going to be really exciting. We're going to have a short break right now. Uh, no, no, it's going to be a really long break because um, I finally can get something to eat. Um, so uh, we're going to be back at 2. And then I'm going to talk to uh, Hannes Schwader, who's the managing director um, of Intel here. And we're going to see, uh, he's going to let us know about their latest um, invention. So, going to be back in about 40 minutes. I see you soon.